When Democrats last had the majority and proposed blowing up the Senate rules and the historic way that the Senate has worked, I gave a series of speeches explaining how the father of the Constitution, James Madison, intended for the Senate to be a deliberative body. In other words, a break on the hot passions that occurred that occur in the, in the House of Representatives. I repeated my deeply held opposition to gutting the Senate process even when my party took control of all three branches. And it would have been politically expedient in the short term. I don't know how many times President Trump brought up, brought up doing away with what we call the filibuster or the 60 vote requirement. It was even followed by a lot of, the, of our Republican Party grassroots wanting to overcome Democrats' use of the cloture rule to block the Republican agenda during those four years. But I spoke out strongly against it in 2017. Over half of the current Democrat senators signed a letter calling for preservation of the current rules requiring the 60 votes to stop debate for considering the legislation despite the use of nuclear option for nominees. I agree with President Biden's position in 2005, reflecting on the same understanding that I have of the Constitution and the role of the Senate as envisioned by James Madison, then Senator Biden said this, quote, that's the reason we have the rule. So when one party controls all levers of government, one man or woman can't stand on the floor of the Senate and resist the passions of the moment, end of quote. Even Senator Schubert, the majority leader, said at that time, gutting the cloture rule would be a quote-unquote doomsday for democracy. Doomsday for democracy. Now it seems like Senator Schumer invites that doomsday. Senator Durbin hit the nail on the head as recently as 2018, saying, quote, it would end, it would be the end of the Senate as it was originally devised and created, going back to our founding fathers, end of quote. I agreed then, and I agree now. Now the shoe is on the other foot, and Democrats have changed their position. Many, not for the first time. Senator Durbin has now joined the crusade of his Democratic predecessor, Steve, Stephen Douglas of Illinois, famous for debating Abraham Lincoln on the issues of slavery. But that Douglas from Illinois also proposed a Senate rule changing uh, to change, allowing a narrow majority to vote a final vote on bills. Hypocrisy is not rare in politics, on both sides of the aisle. But the fact that Democrats switch principles on such a constant consequential matter whenever Senate control changes from one party to the other is particularly glaring. The party of Jim Crow, which made liberal use of so-called filibuster just over a year ago to block Republicans' agendas, are now saying falsely it's a relic of Jim Crow. I do not see how they can look the voters in the eyes with no sign of embarrassment. I do not understand why the policemen of our governmental system, the media, isn't roasting them for this hypocritical power grab. I would now like to address a misconception on the cloture motion 
the 60 vote requirement. The cloture motion requires 60 votes to bring consideration of legislation to finality. Just because it can be used to block legislation does not mean that the term cloture always equals a filibuster. Cloture cuts off not just debate, but the offering of amendments. Voting for cloture also is saying that the Senate has voted on enough amendments. Senators who have amendments important to their state that they want to offer should be voting against cloture to preserve their right to offer amendments as their constituents might desire. Debate and amendments are the hallmark of this democracy, not an obstacle to be swept aside in pursuit of short-term partisan agenda. When Democrats last controlled the Senate with 60 votes and thereafter, amendment votes became very rare. Even rank-and-file Democrats lost opportunities to rep represent their states with amendments important to that state. Let's look at the cloture issue another way. Also, many people confuse debate over filibuster with talking nonstop to delay. That's a kind of Mr. Smith goes to Washington filibuster, the famous movie you know. This has nothing to do with cloture. People who talk about returning to the so-called talking filibuster are confusing two different Senate rules, both called filibuster. Senators have never had to talk until they drop from exhaustion to preserve their right to amend bills. So the talking filibuster rhetoric is nonsense. Democrats have convinced themselves, or at least their activist face, and done it falsely, that our democracy is in crisis, and so it is absurd to say only one party, unilateral governments, can save democracy. But once an exception is made, and they're talking about that exception just for this voting rights bill, but once an exception is made to the right of all senators to debate and to amend legislation, there seems to be no going back. You learned that, Democrats learned that in 2013 when they abolished the 60 vote requirement on district and circuit court judges, and they lived to regret it four years later when Republicans did the same thing when we had a Supreme Court justice up. It's a slippery slope that you should not let come about. I yield the floor.